Hey everyone, it is David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with a U.S. weather forecast for July 25th, 2023 on this fantastic Tuesday afternoon and evening. If you're joining me from the West Coast or from the East Coast, what so be it. We're going to be taking a look at your weather forecast over the next 7 to 10 days. Now, if you're new to the channel and you really like these updates, please consider subscribing. If you're new, hitting the like button and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Taking a look at the latest European model, this is the 12Z run that just got done rendering literally about 45 minutes ago. And we're looking at the entire United States here for Tuesday afternoon, July 25th, 2023. We are concerned about severe weather at least for the eastern seaboard and also for the northern tier of the united states for today but there's going to be more severe weather coming which makes this wild weather pattern continue with extreme heat to the south we got rounds of severe weather rain and wind for the northern tier for the great lakes and for the northeastern u.s in days to come with the ramp up of the monsoon across the four corners so let's go forward in time here through tomorrow afternoon and we can see there it is severe weather returning to michigan detroit as well as northern ohio northern indiana there is an enhanced risk for severe weather that means there's a five percent chance for tornadoes a 30 non-sig for damaging winds and a 15 percent non-sig for large hail so yeah we're going to see some wind out of these storms tomorrow for the great lakes that's for your wednesday with the monsoon continuing across the four corners not particularly strong but it's going to increase in size a little bit more by the end of this work week into the following week into early august yeah, dry weather across California, which is nice to see, but that means hot weather will continue, including for the deep south and as well for portions there of, say, the eastern seaboard. Let's go now into Thursday um, as that severe weather transits into the northeast. So like if you're in Vermont, New Hampshire, if you are in Maine, as well as Massachusetts, New York. Yep, you're going to get some severe weather for your Thursday. Showers, thunderstorms, you name it, as well as maybe some damaging winds with those storms are anticipated with calmer weather across the deep south. But look at this, more monsoon activity making a big return across the desert southwest. Now let's go all the way into Friday afternoon. Again, another shortwave disturbance moves on by into, say, um, Wisconsin into portions there of Minnesota as well as Michigan so maybe another round of severe weather time and time again also uh, more showers coming towards Florida for your Friday on July the 28th and then let's go all the way into Saturday this is for July the 29th and yep more showers for the Northeast you're, you've just been getting too much rain this year haven't you and it's going to continue. More showers for Florida and the monsoon is still kicking, but into the higher elevations there of the Rockies. Now let's go all the way forward in time here. Looks like our weather pattern might quiet down a little bit other than maybe more disturbances up here in across the northern tier of the United States, including for Canada. But looking pretty dry and quiet for Texas, Oklahoma, and for the Deep South which lends me confidence that the hot weather is going to continue. Speaking of hot weather, let's take a look at those temperatures for the next 7 to 10 days, shall we? So, of course, California and the desert southwest still continuing with some really hot temperatures. Temperatures between 105 to 115 degrees. It has not cooled off here hardly at all. This is getting really annoying with our temperatures that have been well over 100 degrees for several days already. It's just getting annoying. We need some cooler weather quick for the West. But it's going to wait for another day. Hopefully we break free of the triple digits by tomorrow in my neck of the woods. But look at this. Warmer weather going to really build in across the Midwest and the Deep South in days to come. And let's go into tomorrow. You can see temperatures anywhere between 95 to about 105 degrees just depending on where you're at so yes the heat dome is migrating eastward with time but still pretty hot in phoenix arizona 110 plus i mean i think it was like this is like the 40 43rd day or something or 44th day 
at seen temperatures at or above 110 degrees, something like that. I forgot the post in my head. It's on Twitter from Phoenix, Arizona, but either way, it's been over a month since you had temperatures less than 110 degrees. Really, really ironic. California is still dealing with temperatures uh, right around 100 degrees, especially in Death Valley and the Central Valley there, like Phoenix, not Phoenix, uh, Bakersfield, Fresno, maybe 105 plus for your Wednesday. And then as we go forward in time here, let's go all the way into Thursday next week. Again, really, or this week, I should say, my days are confused. Oh my goodness. Uh, temperatures literally in the triple digits, you know, in the midsection of the United States, including for the Deep South. Man, it's going to be miserable. Wait until you see the heat index is going to be even more miserable. Look at this. For the eastern seaboard, 95 to near 100 degrees. Phoenix, about 110, 115 plus degrees there for Thursday. And then it just continues each and every day where you're going to see some really hot days ahead through at least Saturday. Uh, even on Sunday uh, for Oklahoma, for Texas, you all are used to it, but heat advisories are issued for that reasoning, and it still continues all the way to Monday. And I'm telling you folks, with these warm temperatures across the Deep South, that means the Gulf waters are warming up even further. Um, please check out my Atlantic hurricane season or or my tropical weather outlook and discussion um, that is uh, um, that was uploaded three hours ago. So be sure to check that out because it really I kind of dig into the sea surface temperatures for the Gulf of Mexico. Very warm down there. Temperatures in the low 90s, those water temperatures that is. And then look at this by August the first, August the second, the heat is not breaking for the southeastern United States, and it might want to build across the northwest eventually by day 10. All right, wow, that's 105 there for uh, Kennewick in Oregon and Washington. All right, now let's take a look at those temperature anomalies. We're just going to fast forward this pretty quickly. Temperatures, you know it, it's going to be very warm across the deep south with temperatures well above climatological averages possibly even 10 to 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year. The only relief you might get is if there's any thunderstorms that might bring in some evaporative cooling aloft that brings down cooler air to, down the surface, helps to cool those temperatures down. But look at this. By Monday next week, temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above normal. So some dangerous heat is on the way for the Midwest and the Deep South, and this continues all the way through August 2nd and August the 3rd. Wow, those temperatures across the Northwest also very far above average. Now, time to look at the Climate Prediction Center really quickly on our convective outlook. Today, there's a slight risk for severe weather across the Dakotas, across the Northern High Plains. We're also looking at severe weather for the Northeast. It is on the bottom right side of the screen. Those thunderstorms that are going on there across New Jersey, across Long Island, New York. Yep, definitely getting some active weather there. And that shall continue for the next few days. Let's go into day two here. Yep, there is a level three out of five on the severity weather index scale. That is an enhanced risk for severe weather for Detroit, for northern Indiana, for northern Ohio, like Toledo, Ohio, could get some tornadoes. Some of them could be strong. Can't rule that out, too. Also long to go with the damaging winds that could reach 65 plus miles an hour. Long to go with some large hail, too, with that severe weather event that breaks out. We're also looking at a marginal risk for weather for the Dakotas, also for the Northern Plains. Day three, severe weather outlook here, slight risk again for the Northeast. That might go enhanced in days to come. Looks pretty concerning on some of the convective perimeters there. So stay tuned for that more on that in days to come. And then the marginal risk continues for the Northern Plains. So some active weather, wild weather, extreme weather, you name it, it's unfortunate for the U.S. It's been a really long July. Let's just put it that way. So when we take a look at our 500 millibar height map, because I want to show you on why there's going to be severe weather for the northern tier, that active weather continuing across the northern, the northeast, uh, and even for portions of the Great Lakes, and why we're going to see the hot weather too. So looking at the 500 millibar geopotential height, I'm showing you these air masses is for one thing, there's a trough of low pressure over Hudson Bay. For another thing, there's a ridge over the four corners. 
between these two air masses, you get a lot of active weather going on. We get these short wave perturbations. Here's one right here. Here's another one right here. And each perturbation in 500 millibar speed max and vorticity helps to augment some spin in the atmosphere, some lift, some forcing. And that's going to help to expel these thunderstorms out into the atmosphere. And so we can see another one of these short waves these perturbations going into the Great Lakes for Wednesday. And that's why you know it. You know what's coming. Severe weather again along to go with this um, trough, this large scale. That's a 540 freezing line at that level. So definitely some cool air along to go with that. And then we got that desert southwest high. And this ridge kind of expands all together for the deep south. And we have another little perturbation right here in the kink of the flow for the weekend and that's why you might get some severe weather potentially for the great lakes and then another one of these perturbations tries to drop down for the latter part of the weekend into early next week to end out july into august while this ridge right here kind of noses in across the four corners so as long as this ridge is here and this trough is here you're going to see a lot more active weather continuing across the eastern half the northeastern half of the US in days to come. So that's a look at your geo potential height. Why not? Let's take a look now at your your climate prediction center temperature outlook because there's a lot to talk about. Temperatures will be well above average. There is greater than normal chances that will occur across Arkansas if you're in eastern Texas. That's a 80 to 90% chance you're going to have temperatures above average. Those are chances we're above normal temperatures so the odds are very high for really warm temperatures than below average temperatures look at this you don't see this very often in july well below average chances for temperatures for the northeast i mean come on that's a 70 to 80 percent chance that you're gonna have temperatures below average for july 31st through the 4th with below average chances for the west my goodness we could use it we could use a cooler weather, including for Arizona. Might get some relief. I have seen some triple digits in the forecast, but that's a payback due to the monsoon that's going to build in. And all this heat is going to kiss the deep south for a while with temperatures likely above average for the northwest. So I would say, would you call this all, or would you call this, guys, a wild pattern, right? I think it's going to be pretty stinking wild and extreme. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook here for August 2nd through the 8th. Likely above average for the deep south. The northwest, look at that. You're going to see above average temperatures likely. And look at this. We have a 40 to 50% chance for temperatures to be below average. That's the, the chances there. I mean, look at this. Below average for the northeast. So at least you have dodged the bullet so far for a while here for the northeast with above average chances for precipitation for the desert southwest and for the Rockies. So the monsoon is making a return. Also for the eastern northeast, you're looking at above average. This continues for 8 to 14 days with above average chances. So really quickly, I wanted to show you all the risk of hazardous temperatures. There's a high risk for the deep south. So again, we're looking at severe heat exhaustion, severe heat-related illnesses. I mean, this could be a really big deal, okay? Um, the heat index is there anywhere between about... Let's actually go back to that. I, I actually did forget about that to say that in the video. The heat indexes are pretty phenomenal. Let's take a look at that um, right here. I mean, heat index is anywhere between 105 to 110 degrees on Friday. Now, let's go into Saturday. Look at this. I mean, this is pretty obnoxious for July 29th. So, the heat and humidity are going to really put a lot of strain to the human body. Be very dangerous out there. And that's why there is a high risk for heat stroke, heat-related illnesses. It's not looking good at all. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy the detailed U.S. weather forecast and discussion for July 25th, 2023, please consider sharing this with your family and friends and subscribing to the YouTube channel. I know it's been literally a week since I did any of these U.S. forecasts, but the tropics are just kicking butt right now with activity. 
So I'll try to keep on, on top of the U.S. forecast for you all during the tropic, uh, while the tropics are really active. But you can only do that if you do subscribe, share, and like, and also leave a comment in the section below. And I will see you back here tomorrow with more on the tropics.